Take your Bibles, if you would, and open them to the uh, Old Testament tonight. We're going to go to the book of Proverbs. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 9 tonight. We're going to be looking at uh, something that uh, the wisest man in the world wrote outside of the Lord Jesus Christ was King Solomon. He was the wisest man that walked the planet in human form other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. If you remember in the beginning, God asked Solomon, what would you desire and like? He said he would like wisdom to lead your people. And God said, because that, that you did not ask for riches and wealth and fame, he gave it to him anyway. But uh, he probably shouldn't have because he, he misused it and abused it and didn't know how to deal with it. Like most of us wouldn't with that kind of wealth if it came into our possession. But he was still the wisest man that ever lived. In this passage, he compares wisdom, or the one that is wise, to the foolish. One that is wise to the foolish. And we have a comparison, a contrast between one, a person that chooses to be wise or a person that chooses to be foolish. And you got to decide what you want to do tonight. See, you can choose to be wise or you can choose to be foolish. It's a, it's a choice. It's a matter of choice. And so Solomon's going to talk about this with this passage of this woman that actually is involved in this. That goes through it. And we find here uh, he's talking about wisdom and, and foolishness or being foolish. And so we're going to look at that tonight. And then we're going to look at the fact that receiving reproof by God's grace. Receiving reproof by God's grace. If there's probably anything in here we don't like is being reproved. Being rebuked or corrected. But the Word of God is very clear and plain that that's what the Scripture is for. The Bible says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. That means that it's beneficial, and here it is, for rebuke. It's profitable for rebuke, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. So that's what the Word of God is for. And so when we're reproved by the Lord, rebuked by the Lord, corrected by the Lord, the message of this woman that actually is involved in this, that goes through it, and we find here uh, he's talking about wisdom and, and foolishness, or being foolish, and so we're going to look at that tonight, and then we're going to look at the fact that receiving reproof by God's grace, receiving reproof by God's grace. If there's probably anything in here we don't like is being reproved, being rebuked or corrected. But the Word of God is very clear and plain that that's what the Scripture is for. The Bible says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. That means that it's beneficial, and here it is, for rebuke. It's profitable for rebuke, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. So that's what the Word of God is for. And so when we're reproved by the Lord, rebuked by the Lord, corrected by the Lord, we have two responses. We can respond wisely, or we can respond foolishly. And that's where we're going to look at tonight. we got some great teaching here from our brother Solomon that teaches us about this. Because let's face it, today uh, we live in a culture today in American history that people don't like to be corrected. They don't like being reproved or rebuked by anybody or anyone or anything. Everybody's right. At least, and everybody's wrong, according to them. And they're right. And with you, it's the same way. Everybody does that which is right in his own eyes. And everybody thinks they're right. Everybody else is wrong and marking, marching to a different beat of a drum except for me. And we don't like being corrected. And it is different when we grew up, right? I remember in the old days, and I can say that now because I'm ancient. But when we disbehaved and our parents, or my dad especially, and our parents reproved us, rebuked us, or corrected us, we got paddled. Matter of fact, it was in the neighborhood known that any other parent could paddle us if we were bad in their property or down in their yard messing up or goofing off, that the fathers could come out and paddle us. And that was an agreement between the parents. Try doing that today and see what would happen. Okay? 
uh, when we were in school, and you all as well, we got corrected. If we were in elementary school, we got thumped in the head with a teacher like a watermelon, thumped in the ear, pinched in the ear, twisted by the ear, pulled out of the classroom, sat in the corner with a dunce hat on, you know, and so forth like that. I mean, we, we, we got, and, and nobody, parents didn't run down to the school and get to see ACLU and want to file a lawsuit against the elementary teachers for disciplining and correcting us. When we moved into junior high and got a little bigger, then we were allowed to get paddled. And you went to the dean, and you got one, two, or three paddles. And if it wasn't that severe, then you got what we call detention, and you had to serve detention. And again, the parents, did, the parents actually appreciated it. They even gave permission for the schools to paddle our behinds and correct us, you see, and reprove us and rebuke us. And, but, but no, but, but if you do it tonight, the ACLU will be there with a lawsuit. When we got into high school and got a little bigger, we served detentions, and then we had to have to work off hours and if we were too bad we got suspended for two days or three days you see and so forth and nobody squawked and hollered and, and that's the way it went and, and the law could correct us the government could correct us and there was a time in the church that even the leadership of the church could correct and rebuke and reprove we can't do that anymore We'd be brought up in lawsuits and, and, and child abuse and, and mental abuse and you name it. And so nobody wants to be corrected today. Who are you to correct me? Who are you to reprove me? Who are you to rebuke me? Well, God is God and God has every right to rebuke us, to reprove us, and to correct us because that's what the Word of God says. Now the question is how are you and I going to respond to it because God's going to rebuke us. The Word of God is going to reprove us. It's going to correct us. And when we come to church, it ought to. This Bible, when the truth is spoken, ought to reprove and rebuke and correct and then instruct us. But then the question is, is how do we receive it? How do we respond to it? That's where the rubber meets the road. You see, and we cannot say, don't dare say, God doesn't have a right to reprove me, rebuke me, or correct me. Oh, yes, He does. And so we're going to take a look at that tonight, of this thing about receiving reproof. Now, you see, and here's how we're going to learn tonight. You and I have to learn to receive the rebuke, the reproof, or the correction from God with grace. With grace. You're going to need God's grace to receive it. So we're going to learn something here. I'm going to have to go really fast, and so I will do my best to move this thing right along. But we're going to look at the confrontation first of all. But let's read it very quickly here, beginning in verse number 7. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. And he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. So we're talking about a scorner and a wicked person here that refuses to be reproved or rebuked. Now remember, this is God's Word, all right? Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate you. Are you listening to me? I wonder why so many pastors are hated today. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Are you with me? So you see, you got to decide tonight, do you want to be a scorner? One who scorns? One who uh, mocks, because that's what a scorner is, who mocks and scorns, reproof, rebuke, or correction? Then, then the Bible says you are a wicked person. But if you will receive your, re reproof, your reproof and your rebuke and your correction, then the Bible says you are a wise person person. So I don't know about you tonight. I want to be a wise man. Amen. And I already know God's going to rebuke me. I already know God's going to reprove me. And I already know God's going to correct me because I need it just like you do. Amen. Come on, talk to me, church. All right. I said, nobody gets out of this, this, this tonight. All right. We're, we're looking at God's word. And so, you know, and sometimes he takes some of us to the woodshed and we need it. Why? Because he says it's profitable for us. It's beneficial for us. In another passage, it says because of it, it will yield forth the fruits of righteousness in your life.
That's what the rebuking and the reproving and the correction does. It yields forth the righteousness of God in our lives. And that means we need to live righteously. We need to walk righteously. And to do that, it takes sometimes God's reproving in our lives to get us to walk righteously and live righteously and bear that kind of fruit. And so by doing so, then you see, how many of you want to live for God? Well, to live for God, we need to live righteously, amen? How many of you love the Lord? Then you need to live righteously tonight, amen? I mean, that, that, that's what it's all about. How many of you want to please God tonight? I want to please, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. So there's the wrong response, you see. You see, the wrong response is that of a scornful person, is a, of a mocker. One who will mock or scorn his reproof, and guess where the reproof comes from? It's going to come from the Lord, church. It's going to come from the Word of God. It's going to come from the Holy Spirit. It's going to come from the pastor or the leadership of the church. It could even come from one of your friends. God can use a friend. And so you see. And the question is, how are you going to respond? If you respond wrongfully, then you respond as a scorner. You mock that. You scorn that. And therefore, it's going to end up hating. So we don't want to do that. Amen? I mean, I don't want to do that. Now, this is the Word of God. Listen to what this. The Bible says in Psalms 14, 1, you see, the scornful, the wicked person, he, that person, if you rebuke them and, and he acts that way, he's going to hate you. Well, we need to be careful. Now, wait a minute. He's going to hate you. So what's going to happen if God reproves us and we're scorners and we hate the Lord? Hello? Hello? Okay, just want to make sure. So there's the wrong response. So the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Now that's in Psalms, but the Apostle Paul said the same thing in Romans 3.12. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Okay? So we have that. Paul said in Galatians 4.16, I quoted it a little while ago, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You see, have, have, have I become the enemy of people uh, in the church because I have told the truth? Then if I have, then you see, they've become a scornful person rather than receiving the rebuke or the reproof from the Lord, from what is truth, which is the Word of God, then instead of rightly, they've taken it wrongly, and they've become a scorner and a mocker, and therefore they dislike the preacher. And in reality, you don't dislike me because I'm just quoting the book. So you dislike the Lord. But if you want to take it out of me, that's all right. God did build me with some big shoulders. Oh, amen. Okay. Hey, but hey, wait a minute. There's a right way to take it too. See, the response. How are you going to respond tonight when God confronts us with the truth? And he wants to do a little rebuking. He needs to do a little reproving. He needs to do a little uh, correcting in our lives. How are you going to respond? You're either going to respond wrongfully or you're going to respond rightfully. And the person that responds rightfully, notice, notice what they do. He will love you. See, if, if, if God uses the pastor to rebuke and reprove somebody, and they respond rightly with the right heart attitude, with the right motive, you know what? That person, I'm not going to become their enemy. They're going to love me for helping them get closer to the Lord. See, that's what my responsibility is. Because why? Because the reproof that would come from the pastor through the Word of God is to produce uh, righteousness in their life. It's beneficial for them. So we have that. So there's the right one. He's going to love you. Listen to what uh, Proverbs 1 5 says A wise man will hear. Say that with me. A wise man will hear. So you got to decide whether you want to be a foolish man or woman tonight or a wise man or woman. But the wise man's going to hear. And what are you going to hear? You're going to hear the counsel of the Lord. This is what you need to be hearing is the Word of God. Now, you're not going to hear the Word of God if you're not here. You're not going to hear the Word of God if you're going to go to a church that's just going to entertain you with belly dancers and rock concerts and all that kind of stuff. You're not going to hear the Word of God. You're not going to hear the Word of God if they make you feel good and, and you get maybe a 20-minute uh, devotional and, and 40 minutes of who knows what. No, not going to do that. A, man, a wise man will hear, and watch this, and as a result, will increase learning, 
And a man of understanding shall obtain unto wise counsel. So this is our dear brother Solomon. He's a pretty smart guy, so I think we ought to listen to him tonight. But you know why he's so smart? Because he's just simply quoting the Word of God. And God is smart. Amen? Again, let's follow your notes with me real quickly here. Proverbs 28, 23 says, He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with a tongue. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now let me give you an illustration of that. Somebody sits in the church. They're sitting here and they hear the Word of God. And God's Word, uh, the Spirit of God smacks them right between the eyeballs. Bam! It's not me, it's the Word of God, all right? There's that rebuke or reproof or correction. All right, they get up, walk out of the church, Come by, ah, pastor, that was a good message. Praise the Lord. Out the door they go. That was just wonderful. You know what that person was? That was a person with a flattering tongue. You see, he that rebukes the man, if he's rebuked from the word of God, you see, he's going to find more favor than him that flatters him. We had that same problem with our brother Peter and Paul. How many of you remember Peter and Paul? I mean, remember the church of Galatia and what happened down at Galatia. Well, here's an interesting thing. Peter got saved, and of course, Peter got in with the Gentiles, and he loved the Gentiles, and he fellowshiped with the Gentiles, and all that stuff. It was really thing going good. Well, then he goes down to Galatia, and he gets down there with the Gentiles. But then there's the Jews that come along and say, hey, Peter, no way, you got this all wrong. You know, you need to quit fellowshipping with them, and you need to fellowship with us, because we as Jews, they need to become Jews in order to obtain salvation and have circumcision. So Peter quit fellowshipping with the Gentiles and went over to fellowship with the Jews. Well, the Apostle Paul heard about it, and he said, hey I'm coming down there to rebuke you Paul came down to Galatia to rebuke Peter now let me show you how this goes follow along your notes but when Peter was come to Antioch I withstood him now watch what this is Paul talking Paul says I withstood him how church to his face oh I love somebody when they come to you to your face I can't stand people to talk about you and talk, all this stuff behind you and are gutless wonders and never, that's what I call them, and never have the courage or the guts to come and talk to you face to face. But they'll go talk to everybody else, but they won't come and talk to you. I'd rather you come up to me right here, walk to me and stand in the face and say, I don't like you. You are a big, loud mouth, spit in my face, and I can't stand the ground you walk on and walk away. I would appreciate that person's honesty and being truthful than the guy that comes up and wants to kiss you and then turn around and shoot you in the back. So Peter says, hey, I withstood him to his face. Why? Because he was to blame. Paul said, Peter, you are to blame for what you're doing. For before that, certain came from James. There was a group that came down with James, and he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew, and he separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision, that is the Jews. He feared the Jews, okay, are you with me? And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly, according to the what? The truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before all. He rebuked Peter before the whole group. If thou being a Jew, Peter, livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, then why do you compel thou the Gentiles to live as the Jews? Hypocrite. Hypocrisy. But now wait a minute. The wise man receives the rebuke and will love you if he responds the right way. If he responds the wrong way, then he's a scoffer, a scorner, and he will hate you. Let's see how Peter responds. He got openly rebuked by the Apostle Paul. We get over to Peter. And in 2 Peter 3.15, Brother Peter's now it's his turn to talk. Now, some time's gone and everything, all right? An an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. Can I say amen? Even as our beloved brother Paul. Peter loved Paul. He called him his beloved brother. Also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Because of the rebuke, 
that Paul gave to Peter openly in front of all this, Peter received it with grace. He received it righteously, rightfully, you see, and therefore his response, he loved Paul. What a beautiful picture here. Oh, my goodness. Well, then we come to the coaching, all right? We come to the coaching. There's the, there's the confrontation, and now we got some coaching going on. Verse 9 tells us some coaching. Give instruction. See, we're giving some, here's the coach. The coach is going to give us some instructions. Give instruction to a what? Wise man. Now, what's the results? Oh, old Solomon says if you give instructions to a wise man. He will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. So here's the co- so in other words, see, we're to be growing. All right? This, we're talk- he's talking about growth here. Some instructions in here to be, to be growing. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season, how good is it? It's good. So this growth that comes from being reproved. When God reproves us, and however means and ways he does it, we are to grow by it. And we're to be growing in it. Okay? And so someone says, okay, well, how do I do that? How do I grow from this reproof that I just got? All right, here we go. Number one, A, receiving. There has to be the receiving, the instruction. What would he say? Give instruction. Give instruction. you got to receive the instruction tonight. Okay? you got to receive the instruction, and one of our dear ladies said it. Where do we receive the instruction from tonight? The Bible. When God's man, God's woman, and the Word of God gives us instruction from the Word of God, then if we're going to grow, we need to, rec- we need to receive it, even if it's a reproof, even if it's a rebuke, even if it's a, if it's a correction that God wants to do in our lives, we're to be growing by it, so therefore we must receive it. Amen? So let's look at some scripture here. See, see the instructions comes from truth by the one who's giving the truth. Who was giving the truth? Peter said, our dear brother, Paul, wrote unto you the truth. So the truth comes from God's Word. So we must receive the instructions from the truth. So if you have a pastor that stands and proclaims the truth and preaches the truth of God's Word, then you must receive it if you're going to grow by it, even if it's reproving you. Listen to 2 Timothy 3.16. Here we go. Now, how do we receive this? How are we going to receive instructions? Well, here we're going to give you a couple of them. First of all, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Amen? And here it is. It is what? Profitable. It is what? Profitable. That means beneficial. Here it goes. For doctrine, that's teaching, what we're doing tonight. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in what? in righteousness. So you see, we receive instruction, even if it's for reproof, through the truth of God's Word. So that's one way we do it. Here's a second one. Paul says, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the what? Word of God. You see, how are we going to receive instruction? From the Word of God. Because this is the truth, even if it's reproving. Okay? Here's another way we receive instruction. So, uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Anybody been kissed lately by an enemy? Faithful are the wounds of a friend. So, a friend, God may use a friend to put a little wound in us called reproof, reproving us, rebuking us, correcting us, But if we will receive it the right way, folks, we're going to be growing by it. Okay? And you're going to thank that person for it. How many of you today could thank thank pastors that you've been under that you know that saved you a lot of heartache and scars down the road because you listened to them? Huh? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, there's another one we receive it from. Not only do we receive instructions from the Word, not only do we receive it from a friend, but notice who else we receive it from. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. John 14, 26. So you see, there's the receiving of it, of this coaching. Verse 9 tells us, teach. Cheerleader here, teach the wise man. 
Help him to learn the Word of God, even if it's through reproving. So it comes through the Word. It comes through a friend. It comes from the Holy Spirit, this coaching. But then guess what? Then there's the application. Uh, See, there's one thing for you and I to receive it, but there's another to do something about it. See, folks, we got to do something about it. Amen? You can receive all the instruction you want tonight. You can even receive all the rebuke, reproving, and correction from the truth of the Word of God. But if you don't do nothing about it, then what has it accomplished? It hasn't accomplished anything. And that's why people are still stagnant in their Christian growth. That's why they're not maturing and moving forward into Christian growth. Oh, they've heard a lot. They've taken a lot in. They've listened. They've received a lot, but they haven't done anything about it. See, we've got to have the application. You see, there, there's the application, watch this, of the reproof or correction that we've been given. There's the application of it. Listen to what James, our brother, tells us. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So you see, if you receive it and hear it, and that's all, then folks, the Bible says you're deceived. we got a lot of deceived people. They hear, they receive, but they don't put it to practice. They don't do what it says. Therefore, it's not beneficial to you. And you see, if you don't do what it says, then that's called disobedience. Hello? If God's Word tells us to do something, then we ought to do it. Amen? And if we don't do it, that's disobedience. And so disobedience, knows what the Scripture says about disobedience? That disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. It's called rebellion. When we disobey God, that's rebellion, and that is as the sin of witchcraft. So I don't want to get into all that, but I'm telling you, don't be a deceiver. If God speaks to you tonight through reproof, through rebuke, through correction, today, tomorrow, next Sunday, Sunday night, through the Word of God, then by all means, respond to it in the right way. Love the Lord for that He rebuked or, or however it came, and act upon it because it's going to turn your life into a life of righteousness. It's going to increase you. It's going to bless you. It's going to do, it's beneficial for you. If you don't, then, oh my goodness. I don't have time to go into all of it. Amen? So, all right, so now let's get to verse 10 real quickly. So we've seen there's the confrontation in verse 7. There's the coaching in verse 9. All right, so now let's get to the counsel. How many think the Word of God counsels us? You want good counsel? Go to the Word of God. The Word of God will counsel you. Amen? Look at verse 10. Here's the counsel, all right? You ready for the counsel? We're given two things here in the counsel. Here we are. Here's the first one. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is is understanding. So here's the counsel that we're given through the Word of God when it comes to this thing of reproof, rebuke, and correction. All right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And he's talking about here this foolish woman compared to wisdom in, in chapter 9 here. See, we can either be foolish tonight, church, or we can be wise. The, church, the choice is ours. But the counsel here is given uh, to the wise man here to learn how to live and please the Lord. And you know how we learn to live and please the Lord righteously? Is to fear the Lord. To have an honest of respect and awe of His reverence, of His presence, of who God is. And, 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 and that's what does it. And that is the beginning of wisdom and instruction, the fear of the Lord. And then choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. We need more people that are willing to fear the Lord today rather than to fear man. We need people that have a greater respect and an awe of reverence for the Lord. Now why? Because this is the counsel that's given to us. The Word of God's counseling us tonight, and we can either be wise or foolish. That choice is ours. So if we're going to be wise at what it says here, then you see, we don't need to despise wisdom and instruction. We need to receive it, and we need to act upon it. So he says, fear the Lord. What's the second counsel he said? Knowledge. The knowledge of the holy. In verse 10 there. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, Get understanding. 
See, we need understanding, and that's what we're learning tonight. We understand the Word of God. We get teaching, we get illumination of God's Word, and then you need the wisdom on how to apply God's Word. You need the wisdom on how to work it out and make it work for your life. So this is the counsel. He says, you're going to have a confrontation. There's going to be a time of rebuking, reproving, and correcting in your life. You can respond wrong, or you can respond right. Choice is yours. The person who responds right is the wise man. The person who doesn't is the foolish man. Okay, simple as that. All right? Then there's the coaching. You need to receive the instruction, and then you need to apply it. There's the coach out there. All right, guys, we're on a team. This is what we're going to do. You know, so forth. All right? Then there's the counsel. We go to the counselor, and the Word of God is our counselor. And he tells us we're to fear the Lord. We're to, to, to have the knowledge. That we're to have knowledge of the holy, of the Word of God. All right, so are you ready for the next one? All right, let's look at the compensation. There's going to be some compensation. How many of you like compensation? You want some compensation for being the wise man tonight? For being the wise woman tonight? For receiving it with the confrontation? You decided to receive it rightly? You decided to receive it as a wise person? A wise man? So you're receiving the instruction. You're applying the instruction. Okay. And now you're getting some counsel to fear the Lord. Have an understanding of the Holy One of God. All right. So we're working on that. And then there's going to be some, some, so there's going to be some great compensation for it. God's going to compensate you for doing it. Now watch this. Don't miss this. This is exciting. Look at verse 11 with me. We're going to move quickly here. I've got to hurry quickly. For by, everybody in the Word with me? Look what verse 11 says. For by me, now this isn't talking about for by me Solomon. Uh, you know, this is for by me God. All right, this is God speaking. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Now, just think about this. This is all from rightly with the right heart attitude, receiving the rebuke or the reproof or the correction from God's Word. If we do this right and respond right, God says, I'm going to compensate you. And here's what I'm going to compensate you with. This is great. I'm going to compensate you. I'm going to multiply your days. That means your days are going to be profitable. Now, we're talking days. Now, we're just talking days here. Your day, how many want profitable days? How many want to have your days profitable in what you do? I think we all do. But we've got to put it all together here now. Okay, you understand that. All right, so the, look at that. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So I'd like to have some profitable days, wouldn't you? But let's take a little bit further. Then he talks about years. He said, I'll not only give you profitable days, I will increase your years. Are you with me on this? You know what that means? fruitful. See, days are going to be profitable, but over the years, you're going to be fruitful. How many of you want to have fruitful years? Boy, I do. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know why? Because God says, I will give it to you. God says, I have it for you, and I will give it to you if you will respond right to the reproof and rebuke and correction that I do. And you'll have the right heart attitude, Okay, you'll receive the counseling and the coaching and all of that stuff and do what we talked about in the previous verses, and guess what? All that's yours. Amen? Isn't that great? I tell you, God is fantastic. He's fantastic. And He puts all this before us, and He says, now church, tonight, you guys have got a choice. Here it is. Be foolish or be wise. If you become foolish, you're going to be a scoffer, a scorner, and you're even going to hate me. You're not even going to like me because I corrected you. You're not going to like the friend who corrected you. You're not going to write the preacher who reproved you if you're a scorner and a mocker. But if you're wise, you're going to love me. And you're going to love him and you're going to love her, whatever it is. Oh, this is great. But wait a minute. It's always a good part, but he also throws in one a little bit for us to think about. And that's the consequences. <laughs> Uh-oh, we don't like the consequences, do we? The consequences. Look at verse 12 with me. If thou be wise... Thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou, what? But if thou scornest, if you be a scorner, a mocker, thou alone shall bear it. Are you with me? So you see, he says, if, there's the condition. You have a choice to make. All right? So here we go. The consequences is a personal responsibility. Everybody is responsible personally to what they do or don't do with the correct and reproof and the, and the rebuke that God has given to you. 
I'm not going to answer for you, church. You're not going to answer for me. Paul says, every man shall stand and give an account of himself. All right? Everyone's going to give an account of themselves. And we have a responsibility as to how we're going to act on this and how, what we're going to do. You see, there's a personal responsibility that takes place. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me. Are you listening to what he's saying here? Proverbs 8.36. Do you see it? See, it's, in other words, it's this, church. What we do with our reproof or correction is up to us individually. It's up to you what you do with it. It's up to you what you do with it. It's up to do with what I do with it. It's my personal responsibility. And there are consequences. One is, look this, but he that sinneth against me, God says, wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me, and that's what a scorner does and a scoffer does who doesn't refuse. Paul, he, t- he started out right off the bat with this. If you refuse and with the wrong attitude and, rep- and all this, with the reproof or, rep- or rebuke or correction, you hate him. If you receive it, you love him. Hello? And so what's the consequences? Death. That's not just physical death. Spiritual death, death to your dreams, death to your family, death to your hopes, death to your business, death to your finances. I mean, death comes in many ways, church. It doesn't make any difference, but the Bible says, Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief, who is who? The devil. He cometh but what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. How many of you know, even in your own life in the past, maybe before you were saved, and even went through some tough times being saved, but you know people that are not, that you see their lives being destroyed, their homes, their families, their marriages, I mean, everything taken away from them. That's what the devil does. So so death comes in all fashions and ways. So there's the consequences. It's a personal responsibility, but I want you also to see there's a permanent reward. But now wait a minute, don't get excited because there's two, I, there's two rewards. There's two rewards. Now we all say, oh, I want the reward, hallelujah. Well, wait a minute, don't go hallelujah yet. Okay? I have this personal responsibility in verse 12. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if, if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. There's a permanent reward of victory And that is the promised land. You remember the story, and I'm going to finish it out. You got there in your notes on that last page. I want to finish this out with an illustration with Moses and the children of Israel and what God had promised them. God promised them the promised land, right? He said, I'm going to give you a land that flows with milk and honey. I promise you that. It's got everything you need and want. It's yours. Go in and possess it and take it. It's yours. Right? Right? So here we come. They get here, we get there, we're ready to go. And so they send out 12 spies, one from each tribe. And they go and spy out the land, and they come back and give the report. All right, pick it up. And they told him, this is the 10 spies came back, and they said, We came into the land, whether thou sendest us. And surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Now the fruit they carried were grapes that were big as bowling balls. They had to carry them on a big staff pole with two men over their shoulders to carry one cluster of grapes. Can you imagine? Because you've got to understand, they were in the land of the giants, and they grew some big grapes. Because a nine-foot giant likes to eat a bowling ball grape. He don't want to eat no little pebble. You know what I'm saying? He wants something big, because when he opens up his mouth, it's as big as his whole head. But look at the next word, nevertheless. Say that with me, nevertheless. The people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. Oh, man, they got military might. They got the greatest technology. I mean, the latest in lasers. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. We saw the giants. That's in numbers. That's what the report of the ten spies says. Well, let's see what Joshua and Caleb said. See, now we got two that are going to give a report. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which is passed through to, to search it, it is an exceeding good land. Boy, positive, amen. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring it us into the land and give it us. 
and land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. That was Caleb's and Joshua's report. Now, later on, 14 years later, Caleb's recalling this. And Caleb in Joshua 14, 8 says this, Nevertheless, my brethren, that went up with me, that were the other ten spies, made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. Then here's what the people said about the report. And all the children of Israel murmured against the pastor. Moses was the pastor of two and a half million Jews. Oh, do I feel sorry for that man. And they murmured against Moses and against Aaron. Now, remember who Moses was. He was the greatest leader. He was the lawgiver. And the law was given to him by the angels. Remember, you learned that in Hebrews, in the second chapter of Hebrews, all right? And Aaron was the high priest. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would to God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would to God we had died in the wilderness. They were scorners. They were mockers. Are you with me? And what did we read a while ago? They show what? Now, so we've heard the Ten Spies report. We heard Caleb and Joshua's report. We heard the people's report. Now let's see what God says. <laughs> this is always the good one. Remember, there is a permanent reward. Are you with me? Here we go. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. This is what God says. And all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured, notice, against me. You didn't murmur against the pastor. You didn't murmur against the high priest. You murmured against me. And by the way, God says that all murmuring is against me. That's what he says right here. And if you study the word murmuring throughout the Old Testament, God classifies it as murder. And so what was their permanent reward? Everybody that was 20 years and older died. Just what they said. Would to God that we died in the wilderness? And God says, no problem. All of you are going to die in the wilderness. And there were only two that went into the promised land. They got their reward too. Who was Caleb and Joshua that was over 20, went into the promised land that flowed with milk and honey and all the victories and the loot and the wealth and everything that they had. You see, the choice is yours tonight. Be a wise man or be a wise or foolish man. Which do you want? Which do you want? The choice is ours, church. We can choose. And remember now, this is all about how we respond to reproof, rebuke, and correction. And the only way we can respond rightly and what all that we talked about is by the grace of God. You're going to have to have God's grace to respond the right way with the right heart attitude when we get knocked between the eyes, when we get our toes stepped on, when we get spanked in God's woodshed, we need to have the right heart attitude. Be a wise man. Accept it with the grace of God, you see. Receive it. Grow from it and buy it because it's profitable for you. God will multiply your days. They will be profitable. He will increase your years with plenty of fruit. And you will have a permanent reward in the promised land. Woo! Hallelujah! It don't get any better than that. But you see, we can jump up and down and shout pews and say hallelujah. But how are you going to respond the next time we open the word of God here and God smacks you upside the head? Because that's what he does with the book. I'm glad he does because it keeps me straight. And there are times when I get out of line, I need a spanking. And so do you. And you know what? We are wrong sometimes. Sometimes we're wronger than we want to admit. That's why we got the Holy Ghost. 
So, wasn't that good tonight? God's Word is exciting. It's thrilling. And even though it told me, man, if you don't be a wise boy, you're going to get in trouble. I see, the problem is, see, we don't want to hear that. I don't want God to tell me I'm going to be in trouble. I don't want God to rebuke me and reprove me and correct me. Who does he think he is? I'm Georgie boy. You know, who does he think he is? But you see, that's the way we act because we don't fear him. And when we don't fear him and respect him, we just say, who does God think he is to reprove me and rebuke me and to correct me? And who does he think he is to use that loud mouth preacher to do it? Who does he think he is to use the word of God to do it? Who does he think he is to use that, that, that lovely friend of yours that, that wants to help you and do something for you and because they love you and they, they see something? So who are these people? Man, who do they think they are? Well, you can take that attitude, but you will be the foolish person and you will scorn and mock and we've heard what that consequences is. I don't want that, amen? amen. Now we received some instruction tonight. Now what are we going to do with it? See, you've got to apply it if we don't apply it. So the next time Sunday morning comes along, if the Word of God hits you between the eyes, respectfully jump up and shout, go, oh, man, did that hurt. And those of us that were here tonight will know what you mean. Or I needed that. Folks, there's not a time I don't walk off this platform that I say, God, I needed that. Whether it was good or not so good. It's all good. It's God's Word. But it hurts sometimes, doesn't it? And as I've said many times in this pulpit, church, have this pastor become your enemy because I tell you the truth. The truth that I tell you is the Word of God. Am I perfect? No. Do I have flaws? Yes. Do I have shortcomings? Yes. So do you. Do I have some pimples? Yes. And you're not going to pop them. Only I get to squeeze it and pop it. Do I have any warts? Yeah. And I'm the only one who's going to burn them off. Me and God, you're not. Okay? Do I have some cooties? Yeah. And you're not going to pick them. Because it's not your responsibility to pick them or pop them or burn them. That's his. And trust me, he can do a much better job than you can. Believe me. But you see, we're all in the same boat. And every now and then, God has to correct us. He has to reprove us. He has to rebuke us. And if we're really honest, we'd say probably more often than we'd like. Amen. It's just on how we respond to it, folks. I don't know about you. Let's respond as wise men and women. And let's get what God has for us. Let's get those multiplied days in our lives. Okay? Let's get that uh, uh, productivity. Let's get that uh, prosperity, if you want to call it that. Let's get those increased fruitful. I want a fruitful life, don't you? And not just today. I want it for the years to come. That's what he said. I will increase your years. Your years will be fruitful. Your days will be multiplied. And then I'm looking forward to that permanent reward. The promised land. Wow. So the next time God gets the whip and stick out, have a good attitude and say, you know, Lord, I needed that. Lord, you were right and I was wrong. Because he's always right. And Lord, thank you for that man of God or woman of God that corrected me. Thank you for their reproof that you use them to provide that reproof because it's for my benefit. It's to help me to grow righteous and to live righteous and to please you and to, and to walk righteous before you and to please you, Lord. Thank you for that person in my life. Thank you for that friend. Thank you for that pastor that you've given me. We need to go home, but I just feel the presence of God in this place. I'm telling you. I don't know if you do or not, but I sure do. And I thank God for it. Amen. He does show up once in a while around this place, and I'm grateful for it. And uh, we need this. We had a good meal tonight. We had filet mignon. We had steak, prime rib. 
We even had some lobster and shrimp to go with it. Woo! We even had some caviar for some of you and veal for some of you. And some of you, we had Cheerios and Oreo cookies for my little man, Sean. No, tonight we had pepperoni and cheese pizza. Amen, church.